Dmitry Dmitrievich Shostakovich was born on September 25th, 1906 in St. Petersburg, which was then the capital city of the Russian Empire. He died on August 9th, 1975 in Moscow, which was then the capital city of the Soviet Union. He was a witness to the birth of the Soviet Union and subsequently lived and worked in an environment that Westerners can hardly imagine. Like so many Soviet citizens, Shostakovich led two very different lives. His public life was that of a docile apparatchik, someone who did what he was told to do. In his private life, he could think and feel as he chose, provided he didn't tell anyone what he was thinking and feeling. Like so many artists in the Soviet Union, composers, painters, authors, and poets, Shostakovich publicly said that his work meant one thing while privately acknowledging that it meant something else entirely. For example, the obsessively repeated notes at the conclusion of Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony that were originally identified as representing the cheers of triumphant Soviets were described by those in the know as representing a spear being thrust into the ribs of a man stretched on the rack. Another example, Shostakovich told the authorities that the mood of grief that dominates his string quartet number no. eight of 1960 was a memorial to the destruction of Dresden in February of 1945. In fact, it described his own suicidal grief at having been forced to join the Communist Party. At the heart of Shostakovich's secret expressive language was satire and irony. Irony. It's how generations of Soviets maintained their sanity. In his Pulitzer Prize-winning book, Lenin's Tomb, David Remnick describes the Soviet Union this way, quote, it was Oz, the world's longest running and most colossal mistake. And the only way to endure it all was the perfection of irony. There was no other way to live. Even the sweetest seeming grandmother, even she, was possessed of a sense of irony that would chill the spine of any absurdist at Paris's cafe floor." Unquote. The fifth movement of Shostakovich's Symphony No. 13 veritably oozes with satire and irony. Like all five movements of the symphony, it is a setting of a poem by the Russian poet Yevgeny Yevtushenko. The poem, entitled Career, begins by telling the story of Galileo, who the Catholic clergy claimed to be both wicked and senseless. The poem acknowledges that Galileo was senseless by insisting that the earth revolved around the sun. As opposed to a colleague of Galileo's, who in order to advance his career, betrayed Galileo and denied what he knew to be true. As the poem trenchantly observes, instead of advancing his career, the turncoat destroyed it. As for Galileo, by facing the risk alone, he achieved true greatness. The poet Yevtushenko concludes the first half of the poem by offering up three cheers for other brave men, like Shakespeare, Pasteur, Newton, and Tolstoy. With the invocation of Tolstoy by the male chorus, the bass soloist asks, Lev? And the chorus answers, Lev. That last little bit of text, Lev? Lev, was added by Shostakovich himself. The mention of Tolstoy's name prompts the soloist to sarcastically ask, Lev? Well, yes, Lev. Leo Tolstoy, the great Tolstoy, the Tolstoy of war and peace as opposed to Joseph Stalin's favorite writer, a science fiction and historical novelist named Alexei Tolstoy. Shostakovich is being naughty here at the dead Stalin's expense. Let's hear that last stanza, which concludes with the chorus singing, Tolstoy, the soloist asks, Lev? And the chorus answers with a shrug, Lev. The chorus's response is followed by a flatulent 
bassoon line, a satirical reference to Joseph Stalin, Alexei Tolstoy, and a Soviet system that forced its citizens to choose between the truth and their careers.